look at the first chapter of the book of Matthew. And it says in verse 18, now the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise, Jesus the anointed one. There were some other people back there at that time whose name was Jesus too. Did y'all know that? That there were a few other people named Jesus. He wasn't the only one named Jesus, but he was the only anointed one. He was the only Jesus Christ or Jesus the anointed one. The others were not anointed of God. See, but say now, the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise. When his mother Mary was uh, espoused to Joseph, before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Ghost. Now, they were actually engaged, but their engagement was totally different from our engagements here in America. I mean, when you got engaged then, it was almost like you were married. When you gave the diary and all of that, and you committed uh, to that person, you were just about married. But you were not totally married, but their engagements were totally different than our, we don't even have the mindset of the way that they uh, did with their engagement. You had to give a gift to that father and all of that, and I mean, and she was yours, and, uh, and you were hers until the day of that marriage there. And you consecrated yourself, and she would wait for that spouse to come, and that, uh, 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 well, fiancé and that, particular setting to actually come and she would wait and uh, as the Jewish custom would be she didn't know exactly when the day would be would, would be there that's why we get the scripture say the bridegroom is coming the bridegroom is coming because she knew that she was engaged and she knew the season of his coming but she did not know the exact moment and you can you imagine that you had to stay ready for your groom to come I mean, you had to stay ready, man. He could come at any time there. You were engaged and you knew the season, but not the exact day or time that he was going to come. And uh, anyway, the scripture talks about that and gives that illustration about the bridegroom coming. But uh, anyway, he was engaged to Mary. And uh, the Bible tells us that Mary was visited by the angel. And the angel... Uh, spoke to her and told her that she was highly favored of the Lord. Now, we're still talking about this Christmas story and why Jesus had to come to, as a baby into the world. He had to come as a man born into this world, my friend. It sounds so good to hear that, well, uh, this or he could have sent this, but no. He had to come into this world as a man. He had to have a divine plan that would dupe the devil. The man... Jesus could not have been born of a man. Some say, well, was, was Jesus virgin born? If he wasn't, you're going to die and spend eternity in hell. He better have been virgin born if you and I have any hope. Why? Because Adam sinned. And the Bible tells us that death passed upon all men. Every human's blood is contaminated with sin. Life is in the blood. It comes from the man. Life is in that blood, the seed of the man. He could not have been born of a man. His blood would have been contaminated with sin. He could not have been born of a man because the life is in the man. That seed of that man carries the life, that blood that's in the womb. Now, he could use the woman as an incubator, so to speak, but the blood had to be the blood of the father, perfect, uncontaminated blood. So here, because this man, Adam, had sinned, Jesus is called the, the second Adam, some places call him the last Adam, but because man had sinned, Adam, God still had salvation and the redemption of mankind on his mind all the time. He had you and me on his mind all the time. Through the laws and all that, the Bible tells us with the law, he was not well pleased with the, uh, the shedding of bulls and goats. He was not well pleased, but he was totally pleased with the blood of his son Jesus, the perfect spotless lamb. So all of the time, from Adam on down, God was working his plan. Can you imagine that? God working his plan for 4,000 years. He was working his plan. It's been 2,000 years since that time. That's where we get the 6,000 years from right now. So God had a plan on his mind. All the time. 
He had it throughout the generations, through the various covenants that he would make with man. God had salvation on his mind all the time. The devil thought he had won. I'll tell you, tell your neighbor, the devil never defeats God. So he never defeats God. So as long as you're on God's side, you always win. Amen. I didn't say he won't defeat you. He won't defeat God. But you know what? He won't defeat you as long as you're on God's side. Praise God. So God had this plan on his mind all the time, just like a check or a chess game. The devil thought he could outsmart God. Just play, he's nothing but a cosmic puppet that God uses to fulfill his purpose. In other words, even though I'm not saying that they're buddies, they're partners, but everything that the devil does, God will come back with a counter move and defeat him every time. He only thinks that he can defeat God. The Bible tells us that if the princes of this world had known, they would have never crucified the Lord of glory. The devil will never defeat God. Even when he thinks he wins, he always loses in the face of God. So here, the fullness of time had come. The fullness of time had come, my friend, from that covenant with David, 42 generations. And now God sends an angel. All of this from Adam, all of the sin, all of the law, now God's perfect will is about to go into place. And this is where we find this in this verse 18 of chapter 1 of Matthew. Saying, Joseph, before they came together, was found, uh, uh, Mary there, uh, who was his spouse to Joseph, before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Ghost. And Joseph, her husband, being a just man and not willing to make her a public example, as I stated, they were not totally married at that particular time, but it was like married because if it was his wife, they would have been intimate sexually, but she was his spouse, or that's why I was stating our mindset here in America is totally different, so we don't quite understand uh, 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 the way that they did their ceremonies and did their engagement. Say, but then Joseph being, a, a, her husband, being a just man, not willing to make her a public example, minded to put her away privately. But while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Now, you've got to understand this situation. Nothing like this had ever happened before, my friend. It's no different than our culture now. Of course it was different, but I'm talking about the thinking of people. How in the world can anybody here today in 2006 or 2007, when the year come in, explain that they are pregnant by the Holy Ghost? Who's going to believe them? Can you imagine that? Having to explain to your fiancé, almost your husband, to your parents, to your friends, to your church, that you're pregnant by the Holy Ghost? Who's going to believe you? What presidents do you have? When has it ever happened before? Can you imagine the shame and the embarrassment that Mary had to deal with from her peers? It had to be some. Don't tell me that people have changed that much. I'm telling you, no way that they believed her. Even Joseph, who loved her, said, well, no, I'm not going to believe that. So I'm not believing that. So I'm just going to put you away privately. I don't want to make an example of it. He thought to himself, said, no, said, uh -uh, said, uh -uh, she's lying. So uh, I'm just going to put away privately. God had to visit Joseph in a dream and tell him, say, no, say, it is of the Holy Ghost. Uh, the, and you, she's going to bring forth a child, a son, and you, you should name him Jesus. Uh, because he's going to save his people from their sin. Say, now all this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet, saying, Behold, a virgin shall be with child, and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. Then Joseph, being raised from his sleep, did as the angel of the Lord had bidden him, and took unto him his wife, and knew her not till she had brought forth her firstborn son, 
and he calls his name Jesus. This is what we celebrate, my friends, the birth of Jesus. This was the divine plan of God. We see here in these verses where God got his son into the earth. His son, Jesus, through the womb of Mary, got his son into the earth, spotless, sinless lamb, got his son into the earth so that he could die for your sins and mine. This was the only way that men could have eternal life. Men were in a holding place. They were in the upper coast of Hades, the saints of old. All of those who died before Jesus came and died, they were not in heaven. They were in the top part of hell. And it was a gulf between the two of them. This is what uh, the Bible speaks of with the rich man and Lazarus. The Bible tell us that Lazarus, there was a beggar on earth, and he went to the rich man to get some crumbs from his table, saying that the rich man would not even give Lazarus the crumbs that fell from his table. Say, but more so the dogs came and licked the sores of Lazarus, saying both of them died. Say, but the rich man lifted up his eyes in hell. But Abraham, he went, uh, uh, or the rich man rather, uh, uh, Lazarus rather, when he died, say he was found in Abraham's bosom. Well, where was Abraham's bosom? Was in the upper coast of Hades or hell. And the rich man looked up and he could see uh, uh, rich, uh, Lazarus in Abraham's bosom and he uh, 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 the upper coast of Hades there and he said uh, Father Abraham say yes say uh, would you send Lazarus down here and let him dip his finger in some water how tormenting is hell just dip his finger in the water I would just be satisfied if I could just get a drop of water would you, would you, Father Abraham, would you allow Abraham to dip his finger in some water and come and cool my tongue because I'm tormented in the flames? Some people don't believe there's a hell. They will when they die. Say, would you send the, a Lazarus to dip his finger in the water and come and cool my tongue because I'm tormented in this flame? Say, no. Say, I can't send him there. Say, you, you fare sumptuously when you're on the earth. So you had your chance while you were on the earth. So now he's confident now in my bosom, in, in, in Abraham's bosom of the upper coast of, of, of Hades there. So now you're tormented. Say, so, well, Abraham, would you, Father Abraham, would you then just please send somebody from the dead to go and preach to my brother? Because I don't want them to come to this place. Say, so, no, they won't do that either. Say, so, they have the prophets. Say, so, let them believe them. Say, if they won't believe them, they won't believe that someone come from the dead. Say, say, no, you're not going to get that either. So you're not going to get anything. And saying, even if I wanted to, there's a great gulf fix between us. That's why I brought out this passage to bring that out. He said, there's a gulf fix between us. In other words, we can't get to each other. The Lazarus can't get to you, and you can't come up here. There's a gulf fix. Well, my friends, he was not seeing from hell up to heaven. They were all in the same place. One was in the torment part, the fire department of hell, which most of it is, and the other was in the upper coast of Hades, and it was a reserving place until Jesus came. After Jesus came, died for our sins, rose again from the dead, and ascended into heaven, all of the saints of old that was in the upper part of Hades that's below this earth, they then went up triumphantly to heaven. The scripture tell us that some of the saints of old was even seen in the street. It's in scripture. See, some of the saints of old, they saw them in the street. Some of the prophets of old, or they saw the spirits of the saints of old in the streets. So we're talking about why Jesus came or why he had to be born talking about Christmas, this Christmas story. So God sent his son Jesus, it was a strategic, I'm talking about a mastermind plan that God had to defeat that devil. That devil thought he had it going on. But I'm telling you, God, God is awesome. 
I'm telling you, God, if he had bones, he'll be bad to the bone. I'm telling you, your God is awesome, man. I'm telling you, your God is awesome. So God, now in his master plan, the fullness of time had come. And he visited this virgin girl by the name of Mary. Probably in her latter teens, I don't know, maybe early 20s. Visited, <clears throat> excuse me, this virgin girl by the name of Mary. And she was conceived by the Holy Ghost. Or Jesus, he was conceived by the Holy Ghost. The, the Holy Ghost overshadowed her. And his son, Jesus, was manifested in the earth through this virgin girl. Joseph being his earthly father. This son grew up perfectly, keeping, uh, he kept all the law. He kept every jot and every tittle of the law. The only perfect man was Jesus, my friend. Died for our sins, rose again from the dead, that we might have eternal life. So this Christmas, as we celebrate the Christmas story, it's all about Jesus entering into this earth as a baby. I'm telling you, it took 4,000 years for God to get that boy here as a baby. He's Lord and Savior now. God, he masterminded, he masterminded the devil through covenants, through his word. He spoke it from the very beginning when he spoke to Satan. Say, the seed of the woman shall bruise your head and you'll bruise his heel. God began to speak. He began to speak his word in the earth and began to make covenant with men so that men could speak it. And so thus, we have Jesus Christ born as a baby. They brought him gifts, uh, gold and frankincense and myrrh, brought him gifts, but he was born to be the savior of the world. Say, he shall save his people. Say, he shall be called Emmanuel, God with us. The Bible tells us in John, in the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word was God, and the Word became flesh. And he dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory. This is what this Christmas story is all about. My friend, it's all about Jesus. It's all about celebrating Jesus. It's all about serving him. Christmas, it's all about having a service or a celebration for Jesus. The Catholics, I understand, they call their service a mass. Christmas, the service of the Lord. It's all about celebrating and having a service about Jesus. It's all about a celebration. We're celebrating the birth of Jesus Christ. We know that he had to come. If we were not going to die and go to hell, he had to be, have been born of a virgin. A man couldn't have done it. You know, in other words, a man that was born uh, of another man could not have done it. He could not have paid the price. His blood was contaminated. Jesus was the only man that was born of a virgin. His blood was not contaminated with the, with the, uh, the sin of man. He was born perfect. He was sinless. And he died so that you and I would have eternal life. I hope that you have accepted this Jesus Christ that we celebrate during this time as your personal Savior. If not, my friend, you're missing out on life, and you will also experience true death in the years to come, and that is total and ultimate separation from God the Father. This Christmas, as we celebrate with loved ones, as we fellowship with friends and family, let's make sure that we really rejoice Let's make sure that we really have Christmas. Christ anointed, an anointed mass, an, an anointed celebration. Let it really be a Christmas, an anointed service in your home, on your job, as you're fellowshipping with friends and family. You let them know what Christmas is really all about. It's about the celebration of Jesus Christ. I mean, God had to mastermind. I'm talking about, in other words, he had to do strategic planning to get the Savior into this earth so we could have eternal life. But thank God he did. Amen. Amen. Give the Lord a hand of praise. Merry Christmas to you.